With the temperature climbing and climbing this summer, a lot of people's AC units are just not functioning like they used to in previous months. And one symptom that that can be is low refrigerant. Now, a lot of people don't realize that you can purchase this recharge kit that is very basic, very easy to do, just like a recharge kit on your automobile. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to recharge your home HVAC system, whether it's a mini split, a package unit, or a split system like the one behind me. And this can be R22. In this case, this is 410A. It can also be 454B. R32, whatever the refrigerant is, we'll show you exactly where to get it and how to charge this system. Okay, so just to give you some general knowledge here, if you have no idea what you're looking at here, your HVAC system has refrigerant inside and because of the refrigerant cycle, that's how you get cold air coming out of your vents. Now, in a well done system, you should never have to add refrigerant. If you're having to add refrigerant, that means you have a leak in the system. Now, some telltale signs that you do have a leak in the system is that these lines right here are going to be frozen. They're gonna have some ice built up on them. That's one good indication that you have either low refrigerant or you could possibly have some other things that are causing this. So before we get into recharging the system, I wanna show you some really simple things to check and it's quite possible that your system isn't low on refrigerant, but you just have other things you have to address. So once again, if your system is low on refrigerant, this larger line right here, it's gonna be three quarter to inch and an eighth, depending on how big your system is. This one will start, start to develop frost on it and that's a good sign that you're low on refrigerant. The other thing I want you to check is these Schrader cores. So something that's really easy to do is you can simply take some soapy water and just spray it right on the core itself. And once that's full, if you do have a leak, you'll be able to see some bubbles there. So we've confirmed that the Schrader core is not leaking and I'm intentionally not spraying on this side because I don't want to introduce any sort of um, liquid inside the system. So before you go through the process of ordering refrigerant, just spray these down and if you see a leak, then you know all you have to do is top it off and either replace the Schrader core or you can just get some of these um, brass caps. They don't have a seal, they actually seal right here, brass to brass, or you can get some rubber ones that have a little rubber seal inside. And if your Schrader core actually needs to be replaced, you can get a Schrader core removal tool that I've shown in previous videos. I'll have all of these tools and items in the video description, as well as you can find them on our website, diyhvac.org. You can also find a sizing guide there if you're looking to replace your system. You can find a frequently asked questions section that answers a lot of the questions you might have in replacing your system or repairing it. You can also sign up for our newsletter that gives you tips and tricks on how to save money year after year and will automatically get you entered for our monthly giveaway. Now, if you do see some bubbles here, it's entirely possible that one of these Schrader cores is just loose. Now, without pressing the actual core in, if we go around it, and we slide this, you'll, you'll feel it slide into there. So don't press in, but just let it slide into that groove and then we'll snug it up and make sure that it's tight. If it's loose and we snug it up and then you spray it and it's good, then you probably just solved your leak and you're good to go. Now, if you don't wanna replace the Schrader core, you can just get those caps and just make sure that they are sealed and nothing is coming out and you'll be totally fine. The only time you have to remove these is if you're checking the system or adding refrigerant. Otherwise, it should always have a cap on it. So one thing I wanna mention here is if you have a really slow leak and it's not leaking like every single year or multiple times a year, maybe you just have to recharge it once a year and that's gonna be more cost effective than having it repaired or even replaced. This is a great way that you can limp the system along until you can save up the money to get it replaced. But if you're dumping refrigerant in left and right, it's not going to be cost effective. So you really need to find that leak and get it repaired. All right, so if you've already addressed the leak, you know it's just a small leak and you just need to add a little bit of refrigerant to get the system going and cool air back into your home, here's what you need to do next. You need to go over to abilityrefrigerants.com and you can find all of these different refrigerants that I mentioned, R22, 410A, 454B, 
R32, all of those refrigerants you can find here if you simply scroll down and you can get them in different size tanks. The most typical one is a two pound tank. If your system is lower than two pounds low, you have a pretty substantial leak, but generally two pounds is going to top off the system perfectly fine and get that cold air back into your home. Now with this being said, you do have to have your EPA certificate. Now this website does not require you to put in any credentials. All you have to do when you check out is acknowledge that you have the EPA certificate and it'll let you purchase the refrigerant. So you don't have to do anything beyond that and you can get this refrigerant shipped right to your door really fast. All right, so this is what's gonna come in your kit when you purchase from abilityrefrigerants.com. Again, this is a two pound jug in whatever refrigerant you're, you're after. And then you'll get this little gauge with it. So if you have gauges, you can just get this tank by itself. And I have a separate video that shows this. But in this video, I wanted to show how you can do it with this quick charge kit that comes with this hose. You don't need manifolds or anything else. The, this is literally the only item that you're gonna need. So one end will go to your refrigerant tank here. And this one will go to our low side port on our AC unit. Now let's talk about safety for a minute. Make sure you have some good gloves, preferably some leather gloves that'll protect you from refrigerant burns. And just be mindful that refrigerant can be really dangerous. So if you end up with a huge leak, do not try and cover that with your hand. Just that can be replaced, but you can easily get frostbite if you get too much of this in contact with your hand. So we're gonna show you exactly what you can expect as far as a spurt of refrigerant that's gonna come out. That's totally normal and we'll show you how to do that. Now, if you're working on a mini split like this one right here, you're gonna have one port. So you only have one spot to charge your refrigerant and you're more than likely gonna need one of these. So this is an adapter that goes, this actual one is for the A2L refrigerant. So this goes from left-hand threads to regular hose threads, but it'll look just like this and I'll leave it in the video description. And your mini split is gonna be a 5 16 instead of this is your standard quarter inch size. So what this adapter is gonna do is adapt it from 5 16 to quarter inch there. And the end of this has a core depressor. So when you thread that onto here, it's just gonna push this depressor in. And then on the adapter, not on this particular one, there will be a, another core inside this end. So if you have a normal system like this, it's typically gonna be quarter inch. So you can simply purchase the kit that's gonna be quarter inch. Okay, so we're gonna be charging on our low side and I like to connect this when the system is off. So just turn your thermostat off or you can even pull the disconnect here and make sure that the system is not running. So what we're gonna do first here is just take this um, little protective cover off of our can of refrigerant. Set that aside. And we're gonna install the hose on this side. And you'll notice that one of these has a core depressor and one does not. So that's critical. The one that does not have a core depressor, that's gonna be the end that goes to your refrigerant tank. Okay, so that's nice and snug. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is hook our hose up to our unit. Now we shouldn't get a spurt of refrigerant here. Um, when we go to disconnect this, we'll show you how much refrigerant comes out. Um, but when you, basically when you press this valve core in, you're either letting this refrigerant into the hose or when we disconnect, we're gonna be letting all this refrigerant that's in the hose out, which is totally normal. Um, they don't make these with a low loss. So that's kind of just to be expected. So what we're gonna do here is just thread this on fast. We are gonna get probably a little spurt, but we'll see how much we get just so you know what to expect. That's it. So hardly anything there, um, nothing to be concerned about. Now, before we see, uh, so we see our pressure here, we're at about 225 PSI. Now, before we open this, we're gonna bleed this line. So we're just gonna crack this and we're just gonna let out enough to where there's no oxygen in this line and all we're gonna be letting in is refrigerant. So next we're ready to go ahead and start our system. We'll see where our pressure is stabilized at. Now I wanna tell you some information as far as this gauge. So we're working with 410A, that's this purple scale here. And in case you didn't know, you'll be able to see whatever refrigerant yours is on the side of the unit. So we see right here, it says HFC 410A. Now if yours said R22, you would know to purchase R22. If yours said 454B, 
you'll know to purchase 454B. Now, if you notice this purple scale, if we travel up here, we see temperatures. So 10, 20, 30, 40. So 40 degrees is right about where we want our indoor coil to be. Now this purple scale right here is telling us what the temperature of our evaporator coil or the inside coil is. If we're below 32 degrees, that coil is gonna start freezing up. And like we said before, eventually this line right here, here will also start to freeze. So if you're below 32 degrees with your system running, you are absolutely low on refrigerant unless there's some other sort of issue or restriction. But a lot of times if you're just low on refrigerant, you can simply top it up to about 40 degrees and you're good to go. Now a general system on a pretty warm day is gonna be 135, 130 to 150 PSI. That's the outer number here. And if you're in the 100 range, obviously you're gonna be low anything below 100 you're probably low on refrigerant so let's go ahead and get this system running see where we're at here and if we need to add refrigerant all right guys so our unit is running and as you can see we are right there at the 100 right at like 30 32 degrees so we're right in the freeze zone if this system had run long enough we would see freezing temperatures and this line would start to frost up um, this can take several hours to happen but i've seen it so many times where it's just completely like a block of ice there as well as inside the evaporator coil and in the a coil that'll all just be a big sheet of ice so let's hop over to our evaporator coil on this demo system and get an initial reading of the supply air temperature and then after we add the refrigerant. Okay, so this is our demo furnace that we're gonna be um, taking some readings on right here. As you can see, it's 72 in here and we have this set for 65. And let's see what our supply temp is. We're blowing 61, 60 degree air. We're still dropping a little bit, but as this coil starts to freeze up that number is going to start to drop until you develop no airflow and then it will really start to freeze up and build ice but until it gets that point you'll still get cold air coming out of the vents so right now it's 74 we almost have a 20 degree temperature split um, so this is showing what it should but it is indeed low on refrigerant so let's go charge the system and see what it reads after that Okay, so everything is hooked up and bled. Now the this right here is gonna act as our manifold. So we're gonna flip this upside down and what that's gonna do is allow us to get liquid refrigerant into the compressor. And we're just gonna slowly throttle this in. You don't wanna put too much in at one time. So I'll usually let a little bit in, close it off, let it run for another couple minutes and repeat that process until we're close to that 40 mark. So let's go ahead and get started here. You see that needle hopped up. We're letting refrigerant in. We notice a little bit of pitch change with the compressor. Again, we don't want to add too much here. So we're going to close it. We hopped up there pretty quick. Um, we're still a little bit higher, but we're going to let it run for a couple minutes and then do this process again until we get it where we want it. So we'll add a little bit more in here. Close it off. All right, we're right there by 40 degrees. So we'll let this run for about five, 10 minutes, see if any changes happen and then we'll check our temperature at the evaporator coil. Now I wanna talk about something else that is critical here. If your system is freezing up, you see ice on the lines at the evaporator and in the condenser, it's critical that you thaw that out before you add refrigerant. Because if you don't have enough airflow at the evaporator, your charge is not going to take. So here's what you need to do if you suspect that the evaporator coil has ice. Number one, pop the cover off, just inspect it, pull a little bit of it back and see if you can see any ice. 
if you see that it's clean you're good to go if you see that it's really dirty you need to clean that before you charge it because that also is like having a dirty air filter i think i mentioned it before but absolutely make sure that you replace your air filter first of all before you assume that you're low on refrigerant make sure you replace the filter and make sure that the evaporator coil is clean now one thing you can do if you do have ice on the evaporator coil is turn the system off you can disconnect it right here and just leave the fan running just let it run and that's going to help thaw and if you don't feel anything at your vents at first that's an indicator that there is ice if it feels kind of cold but there's just no airflow that probably means it's blocked with ice so let the fan run and as soon as you feel a good amount of airflow coming out of the vents then you're ready to recharge the system there you have it folks you got 54 degree air coming out of the vents now once again you would see that number of supply air continue to lower until eventually it got to where it was like the coil was frozen and you'd see in the 40s coming out of here but the airflow would eventually stop so it's not necessarily about getting the lowest temperature it's about getting the correct temperature split so we're shooting for about a 17 to 20 degree temperature split and we're golden so one thing i want to mention here is when your system is running let's say your air conditioner has quit working because it's low on refrigerant and it's say 80 degrees inside the home your target is not necessarily going to be 40 it could be 40 to 50 degrees depending on the indoor temperature so if it's 80 degrees you want about a 30 degree temperature split be between this purple um, coil temperature and your return air temperature so if it's 80 degrees 70 60 50 would actually be our target if it's 80 degrees inside if it's 90 degrees inside you're going to be closer to 55 and if it's 70 degrees you want to be closer to this 40 mark so i just wanted to make that clear it was 70 degrees so we adjusted this to 40 um, but if it's hotter you're going to want to charge in a little bit more and get that temperature to where it's 30 degrees from your return temperature all right guys we're holding steady at the 40 degree mark so we are golden we're ready to go on this system so we're going to just make sure this is fully closed and we still have a pretty substantial amount this pro this system i think was only probably less than a pound low. So you can even use this continually year after year, depending on how low the system is and how small of a leak you have. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the thermostat off and signal for this condenser to turn off and then we'll disconnect our hose there. All right, so the system is off and our pressures are stabilized. So what we're gonna do here is unthread this rather quickly so that the, the um, core does not stay depressed and we're not letting refrigerant out of here. All that should come out is this refrigerant that's in this hose and it should be pretty minimal. So let's go ahead and do it. That's it. Easy as that, there's no liquid involved. It's just gas. So nothing to be afraid of there. And this is so basic and easy. You can save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars by doing this trick yourself. Now, if you're curious about some other DIY HVAC tips, check out this video right here and we'll show you some other ways to get colder air from your vents. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.